Hey, Gloucester Township. Welcome to the Restore, not the Restore GT Podcast. It's the GT Observer Podcast. It's the GT Podcast. Observer Podcast. We changed names, Joe. Forgot, we changed names. It's right there on the wall. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the GT Observer Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hey, before we get started, we always do this at the end. If you haven't subscribed to us already, please subscribe to us. And... Uh, Check us out on the GT Observer website, gtobserver.com. We're everywhere. Facebook, right? Facebook. Yeah. Twitter. Twitter. Well, X. Yeah, there's, X. There's, there's an Instagram. Um, Just follow us, guys. we got to fire up a Hit subscribe. Friendster account. That's probably where all the people are. <laughs> Back on Friendster. <laughs> That's where they all went. <laughs> yeah. But uh, today, today we're covering, uh, we're covering another council meeting. Yeah, it was only uh, April 8th, which was the day of the eclipse. So, some weird going on that day, right? We had, yeah, we uh, survived the earthquake. And we got well, to that was the, a couple days prior, I believe, right? Yeah, earthquake was, uh, earthquake was, earthquake, earthquake was Friday. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, Friday the 5th, council meeting was the 6th. That was, that was, that was, uh... No, council meeting was the 8th. It was the night of the, yeah, day of the eclipse. To say. I'm still, I'm still concentrating. You don't even, on, you didn't even know it was Easter a couple weeks on, ago. I know, man. I just, oh, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> anyway, so during this week's council meeting, we had um, one of our, um, what do we call those ceremonies ahead of time, and this one was for a the scholarship committee. So there was uh, fifty recipients of a thousand dollars. That the uh, scholarship committee in town had raised money through their different fundraising efforts, which include uh, like the food truck festival and and beer festival, food truck and beer festival. I forget what the exact word uh, naming of it was called. That happens downtown. They also do uh, Gloucester Township Day and I think he said a murder mystery uh, event that they that they also do. But they raise money and give out money to kids going to school. Um, well, college or trade school, I think they said, but basically there was okay. not many um, requirements around it. The bar was set fairly low so that it's very inclusive, but it's always good to see, uh, you know, kids progressing in their lives and becoming functioning adults. <laughs> I one day would like to become one of those, <laughs> but yeah, I think I finally, I think I finally settled into that. I think probably in the last couple of years, I kind of felt like I'm an adult. I just gotta let it go. It like, sucks. Yeah, don't, yeah, damn it. Don't I let just, them fool you guys. You don't want to be an adult. Yeah, you know, and you get up and you're like, I just woke up and everything hurts. I think I'm an adult. <laughs> I, can't I, must see. Be, I must be an adult. It yeah. hurts. I can't yeah. see. Yeah, it's so it's, it's I don't remember. Did I eat dinner last night? Or you know, you can't remember things. Yeah, just, That's it. <laughs> it's, a, it's brutal. Like man, I'm not. Yeah. yeah as much as I want to, much as I want to be like. I feel young inside. Yeah, maybe inside, but like when you get out of the bed and you're like wobbling to the yeah. bathroom because you're like, everything hurts. Yeah, you're definitely not young on the outside. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, and it, it happens to everyone. There was a gentleman this week that it happened to at a council meeting. They asked him, or they asked everyone that's now open to um, questions on agenda items only. A gentleman had a question on an item on the agenda and didn't raise his hand, but I think it was more not maybe not so much old age. He just didn't know exactly. No, it's how the process works, and I think it's an intimidating thing that a lot of people don't know, and they just are. When am I supposed to raise my hand? And it's, they, you know, council kind of counts on that, you know, happening. That's just like, oh yeah, you don't know. Boom, right, blue breeze right past you. There was a perfect example that we pulled a clip up for you guys this week here. I'll tell you what though, but before, before we get into that, it is. I mean, look, a lot of people don't go to our council meetings. Mm-hmm. But it is, it's it's one of those things where you, when you go for the first time, okay, you sit in the back and you watch, but the thought of like ever participating is it's it's just so foreign uh, when you're new. At least, at least for me and a few other people I know that went, like where where you can possibly where you can talk. Right. Um, I mean, look, public portion definitely gives you the indication you can talk, but. Until they say public portion, um, you know, there's some portions where it's like for agenda items only. And if you right, it's go, just an, it's yeah. an intimidating thing, and it's it's done in this particular case here. It's uh, 
I don't know, maybe a minute past like when the, the meeting officially started after the ceremony. So the guy's like, holy crap, now? Do I, go, do I, do I raise my hand yeah. now or when, when do I do it? And then it's like, all right, well, they said a couple more words. And then, all right, now it's, wait, he said it again. People can raise, all right, so now I'm going to raise my hand. And it literally was like only a matter of like a few seconds, like 20 seconds or something like that. And the guy raised his hand for something that just happened. And it's like, no, I'm sorry, sir. You're an idiot. You should have done that before. So we're not going to go back in time because we've already pr- progressed past that point in the meeting. I pound the gavel, so there's nothing we can do. It's impossible. We cannot stop this. So you can talk about you know something that happened. I feel there. like you got to make exceptions. You got to make exceptions for the new people. Like they know, right? And that's they, my point. It's, it's a new person. It's not like it was you know yeah. uh, somebody that is very familiar with that didn't raise their hand. It was a brand new person yeah. never seen that i've seen that anyway, expect though. them to beat up on denise and right Sam right right and, you know, that Ray. is accepted or, or understandable i guess you could say but somebody oh, brand yeah, new we're, we're used to it we don't uh, yeah when, when somebody yeah, brand you're treated new just up. as if you should have known you know robert's rules and everything else about you know a, a meeting and how it happens no it's just the the general public who is who you serve you should help kind of Help them learn like that. This is when it was supposed to happen, but yet we can, well, we can now allow that to you know to take place. We can open uh, that look, back up. Is there any, is there any objections from up on the on the uh, dais here? Make them feel welcome, right? Yeah. Make, make them feel super welcome. Why and would that, you, and that, that? you know what? And to their benefit, that guy goes home and says, "Hey, they're doing everything that we asked them to do up there. Right? They're good people." Nah. And he nope. goes home and he never thinks about going to a council meeting again because if if they just say, "Hey," and he's like, "Hey, that, you know that grass in that field next to my house needs to be cut." And they send somebody over to cut it. That guy never comes back and bothers but them Never again. again. Never to right? be seen again. But if they're like, sorry, you missed your spot. Yeah. You know, he goes, yeah, maybe what those people are saying about the council people are true. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they are. Yeah. Right maybe, maybe I'll come back here. Well, let's and, see. Here, uh, let's, let's, maybe let's, I'll be an activist. Let's let the clip play, uh, it. play it out. Thank you. Next is our public portion. This is for agenda items only. And each speaker's entitled to three minutes. Would anyone like to speak? On agenda items only going to this public portion. Seeing not, we'll close the public portion. Ordinance second reading, there will be a public hearing on it. Ordinance 0 24 08. This establishes construction code fees and the bending. We're now open up the public hearing on this ordinance. Anyone would like to speak on this? Yes, sir. Um, I would just like to know, you know the building. Uh, that they're going to build on the dock work. So this is, you can speak on the second public portion. This is about construction fees. So there's a second public portion, sir. Sorry. No, 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 that's fine. There's a second public portion. Uh, you'll be the first one to speak. I'll call on you on the first, second public portion, okay? Yeah. It wasn't Sorry, that far sir. off. Right. It, was, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't that far off. It was... It's crazy. Eh. No, I'm sorry. You, we're not going to allow you more time and go back and give you that's the, the public time that we yeah, don't want you know people what, to have. Too, it's a it's a weird situation because a lot of times, first public portion, people can get up. Uh, a lot a lot of times, people have something that they want to say. So generally, if you're a new guy, you follow those people up, and then you ask a question after they do. Right. But in this weird situation, nobody had anything to say about agenda items, so. Right. You know, that guy was kind of left hanging. Yeah. It really could have just, I don't know. Now you got to follow some rules, but also, like I said, new guy, bring him in, man. Just bring him in. Yeah. I don't know. I just, but anyway, they uh, moving on. There was it moved on to the uh, cons- consent agenda, which is, I, I, I thought this was an important clip to pull because it's not, it's not uh, often that it happens where. The, the council is asked, does anybody want to remove anything from the consent agenda? Because a consent agenda is a whole laundry list. It could be three items yeah. or it could be 700 items. And then we're just going to say all these items in one foul swoop are going to be voted on. Yes or no. Are there any of these items here that anyone on the, the council would like to remove? This particular meeting, it's it, again, it's not a, a common occurrence. But in this particular meeting, something was asked to be removed, and then, um, you know, they, they voted on the um, balance, you know, of the the thing. I, I just thought it was something like, you know, th- this is a, a scenario where 
a, a resident going to a meeting doesn't even realize what just happened. It's, they might be here for one of the items that are in the consent agenda that they have a problem with, a question with, or whatever else. Like this particular uh, gentleman, I don't remember what his name was here, that that went. He's here to, to ask questions or give him a piece of his mind or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. It's already done at the time that he's going to the public portion that now the, the council president is allowing him to speak to instead of going back. But anyway, here we go. We'll just play this. Real quick. Next is the consent agenda. Any council member would like to have any item removed, please speak up. Council President, I'd like to remove resolution 24-04-133. Is there anything else? We can I have a motion to amend the consent agenda? Uh, removing resolution 2404-133. This is a motion to amend. Okay. Yeah, the weird thing, too, to me when I saw that was, <clears throat> what was the reason to remove it? I don't think it was, but it, they voted that it was removed. And that that's part of, like, these discussions happen prior it doesn't happen often where something is, you know, removed from a consent agenda because whatever's going on to the consent agenda has already been decided, yeah. you know, ahead of time. So either something came up, something there was there was something going on with this one. It's again, uh, the reason I played it was because it's not a common occurrence that they are, you know, pulling things from the consent agenda. Anyway, I would recently, like, you know, in, for in transparency, say just say, you know, what, what, look, this we're pulling this because of this. Yeah, I don't Too much to ask. believe I don't that know. they asked or that they even mentioned it, but I don't know that anybody asked. It's just, do you want it removed or not removed? You can okay. have your own reasons. But, yeah, I understand what you're saying about the transparency um, desire. Yeah, yeah just, it. I don't know. Yeah, Why? Even, even if it's something that's just, I don't, even right. if it's just. Oh, they forgot to dot the I. Okay, cool. We'll go back yeah. and dot the I. And yeah, I, you know, I, and, I think, I think, I think council meetings are important also for just educational purposes, too. For you know, uh, I mean, if, if they were, if, if council meetings were were you know also educational in the way that they were conducting things, yeah, then we probably wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now. But true, that's this is true. You know, I, I'd like I I I personally would just like to see that that way the rest of the community can get involved and not be so intimidated. Yeah, uh, you know, what was intimidating recently mm-hmm. driving down Hyder Lane when it rained. Where's Hyder Lane? So you know where the senior center is? So if you came out of the municipal building where like Gloucester Township mm-hmm. Park is or Veterans, Veterans Park yeah. at that traffic light and you went straight yep. out, that's Hyder Lane. It goes down and it goes around the senior center up by the lake and then it goes up. Oh, yeah. I forget what road that is there. Lower Landing Road? Yeah. I, I don't know what that. Anyway, that, uh, that road there, it's been flooding like ridiculously and they have to close it off every time it rains. So somebody I sent in through our eGov questions, which is if you go onto the Glow Twip website, uh, there's a section where you're able to submit a question, ask counsel, they'll answer it during there. If you watch this podcast, you've heard us give that explanation five million times. Uh, but for those that don't know, that's what an eGov is. It's not a uh, thing that every town has, but we do have it. So somebody sent in a question asking about what are we doing with Hyder Lane? What is going on? It's uh, just so here. Let's play this clip. Um, where are we at? Number three, clip three here. I would like to know what is being done to stop the flooding on Hyder Lane. This has been going on for months. Every time there's a heavy rain, and the only thing done is closing the road till it subsides. This is a large inconvenience to everyone, let alone the amount of time an emergency vehicle would take to make the detour. The senior citizen building cannot be accessed uh, access at this time either. My concern is that eventually the road will deteriorate and wash out from underneath due to the erosion. Thank you for addressing this problem. So I want to have uh, Chief speak about it also, and also Mr. McGill, our engineer. So uh, we were experience we worked uh together we found the issue uh but the last uh but we were able to work that problem has remediated there was a damming effect that was taking place two lakes over uh near the valley Brook golf course well, and the, the water the level dropped by the one foot, I just wanted that too. a few feet which uh had a an effect that the water that water level uh dropped the lake that's right near our senior center dropped we did have a second issue because it was flowing um, during our last rainstorm. 
We didn't have the major flooding that we had, uh, but our public works crews went out there and spent very, uh, several hours clearing an obstruction. Once they did that, all the flooding subsided in the middle of the last rainstorm, and uh, it's low, it's back to its normal levels. We believe that the problem has been resolved. Yes, I don't understand why the chief of police is answering a question about that. I would imagine that the guy that has three ten, three jobs in town or whatever and yeah, is in I'd, charge of public works might be the one to answer a question like that. But I, I, uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> it did nobody t- it nobody fix it. The chief was just like, "Look, I'm just gonna do it myself." Right, I'll I'll go follow. You know, all right. This lake is a lot pulling logs out of the water. Yeah, this lake's a lot higher than normal. (laughs) Let me let me see. It flows in that direction. So let me go see. Is there something blocking it from making it rise up, like a beaver dam or something, or what could it be? Oh, the next one is also high. Oh, maybe it's a little (laughs) further down. That's a great thing for the chief of police to be involved with. Why? I I don't know. That sounds ridiculous to me. He he might have fixed it. Yeah, but no. Actually, we paid a a, a pay to play vendor to, to take care of that for us. Oh. He said uh, Remington and Varnick was out there. Solved all the world's problems. Anyway, that is fixed now. I did go by there in the um, the one side of it. I don't know how to describe it, but the opposite side of the road of the um, senior center is look like it's drying out over there now where it was very backed up and still wet. Is that um, like a big field area? No, there's like another lake that's like kind of up on top of a hill further down. There's like a dam that fo- that flows down. Oh. It goes into a little stream that goes and goes underneath of the road there to the lake that's next to the senior center. But it was like trees, and it looked like somebody. There's a culver or whatever. What are they yeah. called? It that goes under the the street there, and that must have been jammed up as well. It was a ho- the chief just explained it. It's a whole effect. I take that lake under council meetings, but I don't really pay attention, I guess. To <laughs> I know that there's a lake by the senior center. Yeah. It's got a little fountain in there. Yeah. It was the backdrop for our website for a long time. There's a little fountain yep, there. There was that, yeah. Yeah. So I, but I didn't know there was another one over there. I guess I just didn't pay attention to that. I believe that it, oh, I don't know. It, it might be private. Like, that one's not oh, something okay. that you can get to. It's, it's on somebody's property. And I'm usually I hurry to council meetings and then anchor when I leave, so I don't pay attention to right, that right, stuff. Right, right, right. So, yeah. But All right. Anyway, um, so the next clip we have is a uh, this. This is another clip of a, a a new person coming to a council meeting. Who um, I said, you know, in the notes that we. Oh, were is this the right golf here. course one? Yeah, I said this poor guy doesn't know how things work. He just he's just like, I want to make sure that I'm heard. Is you know kind of one of the words or one of the phrases that comes out of his <laughs> mouth, and they're like, yeah, absolutely. When absolutely literally means like, we heard you. We we just heard you. So yes, we're gonna fulfill your request that we hear you. <laughs> we're not gonna pay any attention to anything that you about, have to say. About six years ago, I was like, man, I wish they'd hear me. Oh, I hear you. Here I am. Yep. <laughs> Here you are. Here we go. Um, my concern is I've been living there over thirty years and. I live right, the golf course is right in the back. So there's been trees there. I believe it is open space, actually, uh, green acres or whatever. And I just want to be assured that our concerns will be heard about keeping the trees there as a nice boundary. They've been there forever. And beyond that, that there won't be any like building of like noisy things, whether it be (laughs) basketball courts for the um what they're building there or tennis courts where it'll disturb because you know you understand because we're right Dickinson drive on that side there's a group of trees there that separate us from the golf course yeah all i could think was that poor guy yeah now he, he did bring up that maybe some of that area is green acres so I guess that's untouchable area there. Is it though? I don't know that it is. I mean, that's a lot, an, another problem with a lot of people's understanding or impression of things. Is like, oh well, it's always been a golf course there, so that's green. It's it's always green back there, so it's got to be green acres. I see green acres signs. That must be what that is. And you're like, no, it's I actually don't... just somebody that owns it and they haven't developed it yet. So you might get a Brian. You know, Brian's got to ask about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure where that guy's I, house is. It could very well could be, but I, I think the, the point of my thing was it was just. Well, I wonder. 
so what what backs up to the golf course? I mean, I, I think I think the senior I think I think there's a senior kind. I think the senior complex across the street from me might back up to that area. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the property as as much. I know there was um. I I don't know what it's called, but the the Girl Scouts, I think it was meet back there. There's like a little lake and a thing. That's the only thing that I know that butts up against it. Yes, yeah. So Just there's two little dirt to roads to go back to that lake. Um, I've got to go back there. I really want to go back there and and check out what's back there. I think I the last time I tried, it was on my motorcycle, and I thought I don't know if I want to get stuck back there or not. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I don't. I, I you know what there is back there is cowboys back there, Joe. There's cowboys back there, huh? <laughs> there are. I don't it's know time. how we get to them. Yeah. It's, it's time. Well, it, it's time for for our... Uh, You're going to have to find Oh, it. man. We don't we don't have it, do we? I don't think we have it. So, what? <laughs> huh? How is that on there? Oh, I yeah. thought that was one of our... Man, we don't have it. I don't think... Oh. Here Somebody. We go. Somebody shows up. Out in the woods. Somebody shows up on their horse to, uh, yeah, to, to 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 ask some questions. And she she, this <laughs> is a weird take too because she's like, I'm going to ask you a list of questions, <laughs> and I don't want you to answer any of them, but I want you to write them down, and then I want you to answer them <laughs> some other time. I'm going to come back next. I'll come back next council meeting, and I want a full presentation, basically. Yeah, but. This person has, she's got theme music. Yep. Uh -oh. <laughs> we you know it is. She's got some questions. Now, the last minute that I have to <coughs> council, I haven't been here for a while because my mother's been ill, but I've been watching your meetings and a totally disgraceful situations have occurred. And uh, I have some questions to ask, and I'd like to have Mr. Carlamere and Mr. Cardos take out a piece of paper and pen, because I'm going to ask the questions, and I'd like to have the answers back at the fourth week of this month when we have the next meeting on a Monday night. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I don't want the answers tonight. I'm going to take the five minutes to ask you the questions, okay? And I'd like to have the answers back. I've lived in this town for 10 years. I had a business in this town for almost 20 years. So nothing has changed, and I've been researching a lot of things. I'm not going to start with the MUA because there's a lot of things with the MUA, but I am going to support... We should hire people her. that work here. She in does research. Yeah. And I really don't know how you're going to answer or put into that ballot. What I, it's got to become a very, very um, curious question to people that they may not understand and answer yes or no and not know what the answer really is and vote the wrong way. That's, I'm not going to leave that one alone. Secondly, I would like to know how many um, medical dispensaries you opened in Gloucester Township when it was illegal, illegal to open the medical dispensaries. Now I want to know how many licenses you switched over to make them recreational dispensaries. I don't see anybody writing, I would like to know the, the gym that just opened up right over here. What's Carl doing? That something, I think, isn't he? Imprisoned for He's almost 30 a picture, years like a in federal figure prison. Or for selling drugs and cocaine and drugs and heroin. And he also is the owner of the medical marijuana place, Honey Grove, not the woman. Can you stop the clock? Because I want to ask questions. Hold on. Hold on. I run the meeting, Ms. Danny. Okay. Let her go on for five minutes. She does not want any questions. I don't want any. Yes, I'm just asking questions. He also owns Honey Grove. And he sold out the last part of the grass that goes all the way up to the apartments. <clears throat> To Honey Grove, which is within a hundred feet of Millbridge Apartments. I also want to know why the township and the chief of police doesn't e either charge Black Diamond Lounge for a health issue because they smoke hookah or marijuana or whatever in hookah bowls, two to three people in a bowl when we have airborne TB. 
COVID, all kinds of air diseases and, and, and spit and everything, and they're all spitting out of the hookah bowl and they're sharing it with three people. Don't look at me and shake your head because I was a health, a health and exercise science professor for 50 years and you were shaking your head. Okay, well, I'm explaining to you that that's a health issue. So I'm gonna call the Board of Health when I get up tomorrow morning. Mr. Carter, please let her continue. I'm gonna continue. I'm not young, I'm 70 years of age and I'm going to call the Board of Health tomorrow. Secondly, I also wanna know- Secondly. The for the schools. We never hear about third it. Secondly. Yeah. <laughs> a week later, when parents are fighting and kids are fighting, how come you have out there a metal detector but we can't put them in those high schools. They carry the school bags around and they carry knives and things in those school bags. I, I mentioned to the safety director there and he said, oh, we don't need that. But we have so many fights. We have so many kids that are getting hurt in the school districts. I was a school teacher in Stratford school system for many years and then went to teach college. Now with all the things that are going on in these school districts, why don't you spend the money there? Also, I'd like to know from the medical dispensaries or the uh, recreational dispensaries, we're getting a lot of money. Uh, Whew, there's a lot to break down there, man. Uh, yeah, that was there was so many points that it was like, are you going to make a clip for each one of these things or you just let it roll and yeah. see what actually... T that actually was cut down, too. There, I, I had cut out a, yeah. a, a few different things, but... I think, man. The, yeah, normally, normally, one, normally one of us will... We'll do like clips for the week, and the other one doesn't. Like we both, I think, did clips this week, and it was kind of like like I took a bunch, and and, and then I was like, you were like, it was just like we couldn't figure out how to really break these things all down into into separate ones. It was mind blowing so, her her whatever you call that there her time. Going back to the first thing, so the first thing that she said is the MUA being on the ballot and and how it's going to look, and that's been a big concern because yeah. You know, some people thought, is the ballot going to say... Well, the say, concern's for messaging, right? It's... it's. Yeah. What's the ballot going to say, what's, as you were saying? Are you uh, going to get the paper, and is it going to say, should we sell the MUA? And you go, no. So, right? So people are saying, well, we got to buy all these signs to say, vote no. But it could say something else. So... Right. It could say something else where you have to vote. It could say, are you against... Keeping the you know yeah, MUA so, whatever it is. yeah so the answer is so, so you, no so means yes be, today you're sorry want to gotcha go and vote yes on this thing so her she makes a good point here about what's how it's going to be presented on the ballot and is it going to be look the, the ballots have generally been not in favor of anybody in opposition to these folks right statewide basically well so it's amazing and I know you have pointed it out in like group chats not on here but somehow the messaging is already getting out there and american water new jersey american water is selling advertising on facebook and we're getting served ads for Hi. oh your water is so pure with us and we yeah. are we're the answer people don't worry you know like just stuff like that and you're like I don't, are you kidding <laughs> you're already spending money on this to advertise to get voters to vote the way that oh Okay. I'm getting I'm getting a lot of sponsored ads now from American Water, um, and, yeah. I, I, and I don't know if it's because we've been digging into this. It's, right. So comment down below if you're just in town, you haven't been digging into this. Are you guys getting the same ads? Are you guys getting New Jersey American Water ads and an Aqua ads or anything, or is it is it just us because we're doing the research? I mean, I know what the FBI guys in our phones are probably a little different than the FBI guys in your phones, but we all live in the same targeted area. I would assume they're it's targeting. A lot more FBI guys, FBI guys on our phones. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, second thing she brought up is how many dispensaries are we going to approve, and that's been asked. That's been asked before several times. I think the last I heard we were at like eleven. The last I heard we had like eleven approvals. I guess uh, letters of um, uh, letters approval. Of yeah. approval yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that they went all the way through the state process, but it means the GT pa GC passed them off so they could go go on and right. They're basically saying if the state approves you. They're allowed to do it at that location. Yeah, and that, and that means that they met the requirements of GT, which is, you know, certain feet away from different things. Right. Um, you know what? Probably two years ago now, we went through this whole process of 
Right, unless they made it legal. There yeah, was a deadline. Here's everything that, that, that GT requires if you want to bring a dispensary in. So, you know, at some point people were like, how many are we possibly going to are right. we, are we going to approve? Um, See, the, the argument that they have, and I, I, I tend to agree with it, is you don't know what's actually going to open. So you can, you can get the approval. So say... I don't know. You get the you know get approval from the yeah. state, but you don't actually go through with for whatever the reason is getting up to the doors are open. So now you're limiting someone else who maybe they are going to cross the finish line and open a place, but you're holding up because we have a cap on you know on doing this. So I, I do understand both sides of that. Uh, I don't I don't want to call it an argument, but that you know I guess it is an argument. Oh uh, yeah, I mean if you're gonna put a cap on something. Then you should say your approval lasts for this long, right? Yeah, you could have a time restriction, maybe, or you know, something along those lines. You know, and then, and after and after whatever reasonable amount of time it is to get to the state and then get the approval from the state, right? Then make yeah. that make 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 that the time limit, and then let somebody else come in if you're going to do a cap. But yeah. eventually, I mean, look, eventually there's going to be enough of these things where it's not going to be as profitable. Right. I mean, when these things yeah. first opened up, there were lines around them. Right. That's like a yeah. gold rush. People yeah. think, and now, oh, and, I'm going to go. And now if you drive by them, it's like, you know, you don't, you don't see people hanging outside anymore. Yeah. So, like, that part, that, that part's over now. So I don't think we're going to have as much of a big rush anymore building. Yeah. But, I mean, it's probably still going to be a profitable business. And the, the, the other question she brought was, how many medical dispensaries were switched to uh, the recreational? Right, so they opened under the guise or the uh, the regulations of medical. Now it's become recreational. Yeah, and to my knowledge, there have not been any medical only dispensaries in Gloucester Township at all. I Every one that. that's going into Gloucester Township has been both, or okay. at least recreational, because I, I I know that there haven't been any that were only medical. Yeah. In Gloucester Township, so that was that was a question she brought up, and and I don't think that that's. And, and plus, the chief later says that switch has nothing to do with Gloucester Township. Right. That's right. that's a that's a state thing. Um, one of the other claims here is that uh, Dave that owns. Oh yeah, uh, she's really got a hot nut for that guy. This, yeah, this is pretty bad actually. Uh, so the owner of Honey Grove, uh, his name's Dave. I forget his last name. Dave and his wife own Honey Grove. She claims that Dave has been in prison for 30 years for selling cocaine, heroin, and drugs. Right. I put yeah, <laughs> that they're not the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So it's drugs and cocaine. Yeah, so I really wanted to look into this. I really thought, well, okay, how how does a guy how does how does a guy that was like this was selling hardcore drugs, how does he how does he come to right, own- get out of jail and then cut through the whole process of all this? Yeah, so I, I find this guy. I find this guy on on LinkedIn, right? He you know he went to he went he went to many schools, Rutgers, Harvard Business. Didn't for, he, um, doesn't he own the Giant Fitness? He always says too that he owns Giant Fitness. I don't know that, that he's associated with Giant Fitness. Oh, maybe there's I think, I think the person. guy. I think the owner of Giant Fitness is trying to get one also. But the guy I that th- owns Honey Grove, which is the old friendly, is on Blackwood Clementon Road. This guy's been a physical therapist. Like that's he's been he's been a physical okay. therapist for a really long time. Uh, I think at least I don't know, it was like twenty years, but many many schools through physical therapy. And then I read some I read some of his uh, some of his writings on. Uh, How old's the guy? So thirty years in prison. This guy's be... like forty. Okay, so when he was ten, you're saying uh, he must have went to prison when he was ten. That's crazy. And then somehow got out of prison, went to Rutgers, Harvard. Business uh, and many other places too. I, f- I forget. Wow. I forget all of them. But I, I looked it up. and I'm like, this guy didn't go to prison. This guy definitely didn't go to prison. He didn't have time to go to prison with all the school that he was doing. Oh, so she's got to know something. And him, maybe she's got to confuse. Uh, his know. wife is also one of the operators of the business. So he says, not the lady. The lady's his wife. So you can't. I don't. You can't just run around well, making claims like that about later people. Later on, she also claimed that he sold the grass to Honeygrove. Well, if he is Honeygrove, and he sold the grass oh, to Honeygrove, yeah. what was that all about? I don't know what that I think, was. Well, so I think her claim is because he owns that big property 
mm-hmm. that the old friendlies is on, the back of the grass is within a hundred feet of Millbridge. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't. It's not the property line. It's I believe like the front door of the property. Yeah, but so this particular topic was passed through a oh, what do you call that? A redevelopment area or like one of those plans that they have and they they what they did was they changed the the curb yeah. footage of like how the measurement happens. Is yeah. it from like you know, okay, it's a four lane road being two on this side and two on that side and the shoulder of it is where you kind of start measuring it where the old ordinance or whatever it was was you measure it from this point here so they because it falls in this particular area this area has this plan or this you know redevelopment plan and that redevelopment plan specifically states that this is where it is and it was all done to make sure that that approval went through so i i think that that's what she's referring to but i think um the grass wasn't wasn't maybe it was part of it. I don't know, but I know that there was something happened in that. I have to look back. I'm, I'm sure uh, somebody's going to correct me after this comes out and tell me that no, 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 it was you know it was this that or the other. But I know it had to do with one of those like redevelopment plan type of things, like a you know like the Blackwood West redevelopment plan or the you know whatever. I, I forget what that area is called, but there was something specific to that. But I don't think that distance goes off of the lot. Right, I thought it was the front door. Yeah, I think it comes off of something like the front door. I'm not sure exactly sure. So, yeah, this lot lot is huge and it goes all the way back to the apartments. It doesn't count. Right. Um, And she she mentions all the research that she does. This took me 15 minutes to to figure Uh, out. I'm not saying anything. Right, so... uh, next. She wasn't done, though. She had more. She had... Well, um, Black Diamond Lounge, too. I don't. Oh, I don't actually. I don't. I don't know where Black Diamond Lounge is. It's a hookah place. I think it's near College Drive because I know what she's brought. All of the topics that she brought there. This isn't the first time she's brought any of these. No, these I've, heard, I've heard about Black Diamond Lounge before. Um, she's hell bent against this hookah bar. I don't know. She does not like hookahs. Health violations. Look, hookah. Hookah itself is terribly bad for you. From what I gather, like. Uh, if you go in and spend time well, at a hookah Well, hookah is a device. It's not what you're smoking out of it, right? Well, it's tobacco. Flavored tobacco. Well, tobacco is tobacco, but you smoke the tobacco out of a hookah, which is a hookah is the thing that has the, yeah, the a, pipes and the bowl and It's a, it's a big burning that, thing right? with tobacco. I've always wanted to try it, but I've never I've never tried it. But I, I kind of heard, that I, and, I, and, I, and I've seen this multiple times, that like spend a time at a hookah, smoke, smoke a hookah, it's like the equivalent of like a pack of cigarettes. Right. I've heard that before. So it's a lot. So immediately I thought, I don't think I need to get involved in that. You know? <laughs> I've been ten I years. Health yeah, I've been ten years without touching any kind of any kind of like cigarette or anything like yeah. that. So I don't I don't need to take a pack in all in one shot. Right. Um but I always was always curious about the experience. But look, it's not it's not illegal to smoke hookah. It's not. As much as you don't like it, and as much as, as, you, as you're health conscious, it's not for you to decide what other people do. I don't so, disagree. And it's, you know, and it's, and she said they're spitting all over the place. Right. Yeah, they, they, have, they, have, they, have, they have these little hoses. Right? I am confident that if this were a, some sort of a health violation, that the Board of Health in Camden County would... Be out there and take care of it. Like nail salons have to get a health department permit because they're, you know, with cuticles and things. Yeah, they're aware. They're they're very well aware. I don't think we need uh, the police out there enforcing. Yeah. It's a little. It's a. So it's, it's. I mean, it's 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 oh, a little God. thing that you're that you're, you're you're sucking in on. It's no different than going to a restaurant. She, it sounds like she's going. <laughs> Yeah, you're not supposed to blow into the yeah. thing, right? Well, your, your tobacco, but your sparks going up, and yeah, you're sucking tobacco through a through a hose. It's no different. It's, it's, I don't know. It, in, in any way, it's cleaner than and, and you know they clean this stuff. They clean this stuff like crazy after it's done. It's probably visually intimidating. Like a, it's like a oh my god, look what these people are doing kind of thing. 
And if she, I'm sure there's some sort of a reason that she has a you know a big issue with drugs or this whole thing, and that's totally you know I totally get it, totally appreciate that. But I it's council doesn't regulate the health department, and the police are not supposed to go arrest people because they were spitting in a, a hookah. So it's just kind of one of those know your audience kind of a uh, you know the, the she brings up school issues they they do not. And they're not in charge of the schools, so it's just a venting kind of a thing for her. But there was definitely oh, yeah. she copious wanted metal, notes. She wanted but, metal detectors in the schools too. Yeah, and look, I, I don't, I don't recall. Like, she's been fighting in schools forever. Right. We have been fighting in schools like all the time. And when I went to high school. Yeah. And there was fighting. There was fighting. Before in schools. metal detectors were it like, was yeah, the flagpole was. You know, I'll meet you at the yeah. flagpole. When our parents went to <laughs> Three school, o'clock. there was fighting in school there. Like you may bring me bring metal detectors in if, if students are using weapons. And as far as I've seen, students aren't really using weapons. The other day at the high school, they were using um, potted plants. I believe it was. Yeah, I don't know that plants. a metal detector would have picked up a potted plant. Yeah, imagine but. just bringing in, you know, bringing in old cactus to yeah. swing down with. Uh, anyway, she moved on to another topic, which we'll get into a little bit later on. I think we're going to end the, end the show with Oof. this one because it did actually, uh, you know, was posted on Facebook and caused some, um, comments, but let's play clip. What are we got? Clip six. Here. Yeah. Now the last minute that I have, I want to also know gems landfill. Do you know that that gems landfill that you put the solar panels on on a mountain is illegal? And I have all the information, and I'm not going to talk about it tonight, but I need to have information about it. In the 1970s, it was the most toxic landfill, the fifth one in the nation. Do you know that aqua water runs under there? Well water that this township drinks. So when next the, the next meeting, I would like answers on all those things I just stated, and there's more to come. So I will bring it the next meeting. And I expect Mr. Carla Mayor, Mr. Cardis, to give me answers on everything I asked today. I wish you luck on getting those answers, but I don't, don't know which part was illegal. I don't, yeah, I'm is not it sure. just the solar panels are illegal? It sounded like she just yeah, she thinks the whole land or is it the illegal. massive toxic waste hill? Yeah, <laughs> it probably should have been illegal a long time ago. Well, you know, she brings up that it was the fifth most polluted, and that was kind of recently um you know brought up as well by other people she's not wrong in that there is documentation around it but we'll get a little further into that uh topic later on um yeah yeah hi uh, yeah I... <laughs> <laughs> we had uh ray polidoro from the historic village of ariel um he has some thoughts um some well digs he likes to take at council over here too oh, so we yeah. play uh Oh, yeah, clip seven. Uh, most of my comments are going to be regarding the MUA and your decision to do what you've done and <laughs> why I think it's an excellent idea for you to pause the bid and selling the our former MUA. One of the things you had mentioned, besides the conversations that we all have had with you, when you said you were not going to sell it, and if you did, what, what was going to be the case, but you pretty much assured the people. Um, that you were not going to do that. Um, I wouldn't call it a lie, but I think another word for that is disingenuous. And I surely think that that was the case. You took half of their $6 million, what you call a surplus, what they had was an emergency fund. When you now intend on selling them, you mentioned you're going to pay off debt. And that's a great sound piece, but you accumulated that debt because of how you ran budgets and how you spent in the meantime, the MUA ran such an efficient budget. They kept our bill at $45 every quarter. They plunged, they cleaned, they did all the things that they did. We never got a bill for that. And now you want to sell them, take that money. They ran a good budget. You found it, and I remember the word specifically, ridiculous, that they had a $6 million. You called surplus. It was their emergency fund. And you were most gracious to go and spend half of that already. Now you want to sell them. And you want to pay off the debt you've accumulated when they budgeted well. You made them pay by by dissolving them, and now you want to take the money from selling them, and you want to pay off the debt that you accumulated without regard for the people that work there, the families. 
the neighborhoods, and every person that put their blood, sweat, and tears into taking care of us. And you're going to take their money, and you are going to pay your debt, pay your debt with that. Not only have they done a good job, you guys have disrespected them. You disrespected us by saying, well, let's put it out to bid. Now, we both, we all know that there's two main companies out there that are just dying to buy them up, Aqua and New Jersey American Water. Um, we have been watching what's going on in Pennsylvania. And if you haven't seen it, let's just give you some numbers, 150% increase in Pennsylvania, 145%. And these people are over social media screaming what's been done to them. And they're using language that's just extremely unattractive, but you feel the pain. That's going to come here. We know it. That's why I'm saying, pause this. You've already made them disappear. You can't put the genie back in the bottle, but you can stop the sale. Why would you go from a public entity that's taking care of us to private and you'll have no control? No control. We will be the recipients of what they do to us. That being said, you also told us that the mayor has nothing to do with us. Don't insult us. The mayor could not possibly sit there quiet and not have anything to do. Oh, maybe everything's already done. Maybe the deal's done, the conversation's been had, the hands have been shaken, and the plan is in action. But that was an insult to have us think that he has nothing to do. Maybe it was accurate. He has nothing to do with it now. But it's very hard to believe that you want to tell us that. We accept that. I'm sure you heard the laughter when you when you stated that. So yeah. right now, and I don't think every council member here knows exactly what you're doing to us and what's going to happen to our bill and what's going to happen to our sewage or charging per gallon again as the water comes in with sewage. We already paid three bills to flush our toilet. Three. One coming in and two going out. And one's going to go up. We do enjoy it. Hey, listen, the water level is what, 1.3 liters now? And we flush as little as possible? No, we want to flush all the time. Don't make that hard. <laughs> we want to flush and all the let's time. Let's keep the MUA people working here in our township and doing what they do. I never really thought about flushing all the time. I want to flush all the time. I'm going up right now. It's never been a decision. I'll be right back. Where I go. Flush. I can feel a little more in there. Not today. What's that saying? If it's yellow, let it mellow, right? That <laughs> I think that's what he's referring to. But yeah, so he was uh, fired up, taking digs, and I mean, he had a lot of great points in there, but they just fall on deaf ears. It seems like you know, it's a big deal. We got some new people involved that are that are pretty passionate about it. A lot of them work for the what, the former MUA, mm-hmm. um, but there's just not. There's not the there's not the outcry from the public that I think this deserves. When you go, when you think about going for the potential of forty five dollars a quarter to sixty five dollars a month, it's, well, a, it's a really big deal. If you put in, if you put that quarter into months, it's fifteen dollars a month. So you're going up fifty bucks a month. That's um. Your Hulu subscription, your you know HBO, your Netflix and Spotify or something. All those, that's what it's going up every single month. Or it, basically, yeah. what, what would some of our tax increases that people have been kind of pissed about over a year's time? It's like two hundred bucks. Yeah, right. Well, that'll be. They'll hit this in four months. Right. So, man, if you were if you were mad about a two hundred dollar a year tax increase, mm-hmm. and you got this, you should be a lot more pissed about this. Yeah. Um, but I yeah I don't know I don't know how many people know about this. I, I feel like I still feel like it's a small oh, it's, group. Yeah, it's very there's, small. There's not that many people on. When you're talking seventy some thousand, is that what it is seventy thousand residents, sixty five thousand? Yeah, it's a lot of people. I don't yeah. know. So. Yeah. <coughs> So do, uh, this is maybe a stupid question, but do people that live in an apartment develop a complex? Do they pay a bill themselves for that for the sewer, or is that a utility that's included in in rents like that? 
Like, I would imagine electric is obviously on your own, or gas would be on your own, but is the sewer a direct I thought, bill? I thought water and sewer was... I thought water and sewer was included? Yeah, it might be, but it's and, uh, if it is, it's unfortunate, because it's a, it's a bill that they think that they don't pay. Um, you know, typically, they, that's, the, that's the thought. It's <laughs> just like where they say I don't pay taxes I can in ask town. The expert, but yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but it's it's factored into what is their rent, you know. So if you're paying, I don't know, let's just call it eighteen hundred dollars a month now, and you're you know you're now your sewer is going up. Well, guess what? Your your rent is going to be now you know twenty three hundred dollars or twenty four hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So you're right. You don't pay that. You know that that bill. You just pay it in, in nice rent, but it's, it's it's a hidden kind of a a bill or a tax, you know, just like the property yeah. tax goes up. It's like it, when you're there's a, a a perception or a view or a belief or I don't know what to call it, but they I don't pay property tax. No, you you do. It's just included in that, you know. Yeah. So when you when your rent goes up, you know, your first thought is, eh, the landlord's greedy. Right. We don't realize that the landlord now is paying. All of that, right? That, that 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 increase just hit. You know, you look at like uh, Autumn Ridge around the corner here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nine hundred units. That's a lot of. Yeah, they, they pay a lot in taxes. They pay a lot in bills. So well, some of those complexes are like the largest taxpayers in the in the township, right? It was. Um, yeah. I mean, they're 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 STK millions. Millbridge Apartments is one of the largest uh, in the town, right? Yeah, probably in the millions. When, oh yeah, when it comes down to it. So, yeah. uh, so when they raise their rates, you know, the residents are just the, the residents think, ah, yeah, ah greedy corporation. Or just you know, just a, a, increasing, just increasing our rent again. You know, so they can make more profits. Uh, they don't realize where it's coming from, and that doesn't that doesn't really energize them to get out and do anything. It doesn't right. get them doesn't, doesn't get them to vote. Yeah, you, know, you look at look at look at statistics on voting in these apartment complexes. It's, it's a very low turnout because yeah. they don't realize, I guess that. Well, what I'm saying is, it's not stuff, a it's not a direct bill to you. It doesn't have your name on it. Yeah. Saying here's, it just went up. You know, when when you get your uh, Hulu bill or your you know Netflix, and you're like, what? Now it's fifteen dollars a month. It was thirteen. You know, and you can freak out about two dollars. I'm canceling them. What about canceling yeah. the politicians that voted to just now raise your? Um, Utility yeah. bill from fifteen dollars a month to now sixty five or you know whatever by selling it to write off the debt that they accumulated. You know it's it's yep. uh, it's <sighs> sucks. Speaking of sewers, it was asked if uh, if a new development goes in the freeway golf course. Uh, who, Whose cost is who, that? Who's man? gonna pay? Who's gonna pay you to run all the sewers and stuff back there? And, well, uh, but yeah, I think it was brought up specifically because Freeway Golf Course was on there that the, the council was voting on something, and I don't know if it's in this clip or not. I don't recall, but uh, it was said like this is a this is a common. This happens all the time, which I believe does happen all the time. We never saw it at a council meeting because it was something that was voted on and brought up at a public meeting for. The MUA, when the MUA existed. So now, it, because that doesn't exist and they dissolved it, that's why we're seeing these things, you know, come up here. I think it's a area that people are just unfamiliar with and seeing it on a council agenda is like a, what? And so they ask questions around it. That's just my take on the, you know, the situation. So, gotcha. Uh, let's play clip. What Eight. was that? Eight? The former golf course, freeway golf course, we're going to be putting some money out to, to, to do some uh, pipe work. Do I understand that correctly? The application. Okay, who owns that right now? Who owns that property, uh, AP Construction? Why are we spending public money on a privately owned piece of property? Explain that, please. There is an application. Anytime there's any type of developer, there's an application that's filed through the I mean, through the sewer. Part okay. And through the sewer. So this is something that's commonplace in okay. any development that takes place. Who bears that expense when it's just on the developer? Okay, that's thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate that. Have a great night and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. So yeah, they clarify that the developer is paying that, which also leads into 
another topic on the MUA where you were talking about being gifted, you know, these yeah. things. So the the sewer system, if well, there's a lot to go along with this particular topic here, but the 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 sewer system that they're that we're being gifted through the developer bearing that cost when it comes time to privatize and they're able to purchase our things if the referendum goes through that they go on we'll now pay for that even though it was required for the developer to give gift that to us now it'll be our cost that we are paying for that and every other you know piece of yeah, infrastructure so that was put in place in this town that we've already basically paid for if it. you live in a development Use like cobblestone for an example. Mm -hmm. When the developer built cobblestone, they they footed the cost for all the sewers and everything for that house. And then when it was done, they turned it over to the MUA and said, "Here, yep, thank you for letting us build the and MUA, make profit off yeah, of this." The MUA land. didn't buy the sewer system from that development. Right. The developer turned it over to the MUA, and what they're saying is now, like, when another company comes in. And buys the MUA and, and buys up all the all, all the sewers. The MUA, that MU who, who, whoever that company is, they've got to recoup that money now for that. right. And they're so, legally so allowed to recoup that by charging they're, they're you, the, to, the consumer, the the, the, the rate payer, whatever you call it. So that money, yeah. Essentially, we're paying for something that was gifted to the township already. Yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah, that whole part of the the. AP Construction owning the Freeway Golf Course and having that on there was not just that that part there was, wait a minute, that piece of land is still zoned R1, which is one house per acre. Why are we approving this application for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of units was it to be there? When it's not actually zoned for that, so at what point in the process is this whole thing here? And it was something called a Form A needed to be approved, and so a resident um, that you see on here often, Denise Coyne, got up there and asked, like, what, hold on, wait, did you literally just approve something for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of acres or of houses when it's not even allowed for that? So let's play clip nine here. This freeway golf course form A application, at what point um, does the applicant have to be in order for you to consider this form A? Do they have to have zoning approved? Like at what point does this occur in the application process? Ms. Carmen, that's something you can use for I think we could you speak in the microphone, please? What are you referring to when you do? I'm referring to 126, the app, a Form A application for the former freeway golf course. Silence. Specifically, I want to know. It's on the agenda. How do you not know what he's talking about? Is not zoned for anything <laughs> other than. R1 zoning and they want to put townhomes and high density housing on it. So I'm wondering how they can put a form A application in front of council unless the zoning's been approved to do that. The resolution reads Township Council Township of Walters hereby approves a form A application submitted for the construction. A new wastewater pump station before Spain can connect 229 single family yeah. residential yeah. units. Miss Danny, could you please refrain from making comments? I want to ask you to leave. Okay, thank you. 229 single family units and 567 townhouse units located at 1858 Sickle Road. That project subject to terms and conditions uh, set forth in the brick letter. I'm not sure what that's referring to, but that's just confirming uh, their application for that wastewater pump station uh, that they're wanting to put in. And that's the question we talked about before as far as compensation, how that's paid for. That's put in our fees. None of that answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> my question is can the council? look to approve this application if the zoning has not been approved 
to build what they're requesting. So they Why would we? application in, and as their application goes forward, whatever approvals, that's how it works in this Again, does the zoning have to be approved before council considers this Form A application? No. <coughs> no. So are you aware whether or not the zoning is still the original zoning R1 or if it has been changed? I, I think it's a research here, but I can't Okay, I would like you to research that for me, please. He... Here, time me. You got a timer? <clears throat> Stopwatch. How long does it take me to say this word? Ready, set, go. No. <laughs> Just one half a second. <clears throat> That's all. She literally asked a question. He goes, uh, "The resolution reads." I know, and and spent a minute reading. She didn't ask you what it what it said. She didn't say, "I cannot read." Can you please read this for me? No. She read it had a question around it, asked you the question, and you proceeded to think that she didn't know how to read. That's why just, she's asking the damn question. Just can Justin start about covering his ass and then not able to use the microphone. And I, was, I was watching this too, and I'm thinking, is there, give me an hour. Just let, just let me go in there. Yeah, Give there has to hour. be different volumes let on every go like, to, microphone. Let me go to every microphone. Let me do a sound check on it and see. Because we can hear Orlando. When Orlando talks. Oh, absolutely. And then, I was thinking this exact same thing. Is I literally want to send a question in and ask, are there individual volumes on each of the microphones? Yeah, and look, Jim Nash. There well, has to be. We, we, we hear Jim Nash perfectly fine. And... You know, when Dan would reach around and swing it around, and we could hear Dan sometimes too. But at most of the time, the microphones aren't pointed there, but right. sometimes when they are, seem to be pointed in a close enough area. Yeah, it's still volume down. I mean, we could do it now. We, if we had a, a sound engineer here or something, uh, instead of it just being us, you could just go over there and <laughs> turn the microphones down and you would hear. And now you turn it back up, and now you hear me tell it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's you. It, you want to be unheard, is what is, is what it is. That's, yeah, I mean, there's nothing else. Look, 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 we're starting. We're start, oh, there you go. We're starting the meetings, and and All right, like guys, this, doing the podcast, and, and it's like we just gotta we just gotta answer questions like this. Yeah, and then, you know, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. You can yeah, right. move from the back up to the front so, if you'd like to hear me. It's not. It's not. It's not a hard thing to figure out, and and I'm, and I'm sure they're probably in no, the want settings of each microphone. Or look, they look. They got the old Bob Barker style microphones, a little tiny, skinny thing sticking out of there. You could, and if they, yeah, you could ask like, what? All right, what models do you have? You actually, you know what? Provide me the receipt for it. I'll get the model number and I'll do the research myself. On well, there. they're, Maybe that's they're probably request. really, really old, right? Yeah, and we probably could have. But it, I brought know, this it, up instead of a little bridge at the pickleball court that cost thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, new sound system. Yeah, you know what? And maybe you just skip over the little stream, right? We just um, the the town or the school and district now. purchased a whole sound system, and it was like thirty some thirty two thousand dollars. It's almost the same as the bridge, actually. Yeah, so, right. That's probably so now, it probably includes installation, soundboard, what? everything, all wireless microphones everywhere. You can turn them off on. Just yeah. the volume. There's somebody to control it. But the volume on his microphone is 100% muted down so that you can yeah. barely hear it. There's, there's no question about it. It's, it's custom for Carlin. Every time that you have a clip of him, it, the microphone is enhanced. So you guys don't even understand how bad yeah, it but actually I, is. Yeah, I got, every, yeah, do you do the same thing? Dialogue Almost every single it, time yeah. I have a clip of him, yeah. I have to go in and, ch and make the volume higher. And sometimes you can't even understand what he says because I have to raise it so much because it's down. It's not just him. It's also other yeah. other people that are up there as well. The Tom Cardis and and him are, are two of the biggest offenders of it. Oh, Cardis bends that thing all the way around. It's on the front of the yeah. it's on the front of the desk. Well, you should tell him. Look, you buy the equipment, and then you and I'll go in there and we'll, and we'll just we'll hook it all up. Yeah, do some sound checks. And we'll get we'll get it good. Uh, all right. So Denise's questions continued on about uh, the master plan. Oh yeah, Which I, includes, this was this was interesting. The master plan in '99. Yeah, 1999. The master plan stated that 
the town is almost built out. There's we almost have no more room. And when that was done, is because you're saying, okay, this this area of town, this section, or these tracts of land are going to be commercial. This is highway commercial. This is you know high density housing. This is R one. These are you know all the different you know zonings that are out there. At that time, they said we're almost built out. And her point is, we twenty years later, twenty four years later, twenty five years later, years later. We're way past that, and we still have an additional 3,100 and I believe it was 71 units currently approved. Not in... Well, here, let's play the clip here. I, I'm saying... I'm going to be repeating things here. And I also would like to know, um, according to the township's master plan, I believe many, many, many years ago, um, it said that the township was close to being built out. I believe that was in... 1999 and here we are many 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 years later and we're still building thousands and thousands of new houses and i'd like to know how that fits into the master plan because as far as i understand according to the performance reports that just came out the new performance reports for the school we're close to capacity and students and we're looking at potentially 3,171 new housing units, not counting Lakeland. Lakeland is another 1,600 new housing units. And I'd like to know where you guys think these kids are gonna go to school. Crickets. The school were actually down from 10 to 12 years ago. The performance report said that there's almost 6,500, I believe, could be more, but I recall 6,500 kids in school and the capacity is 7,100. So that doesn't go too well for 3,171 new housing units, not counting Lakeland. I think that exceeds the capacity, if my math is correct. We currently have 6,789 students. Okay, so we're close 400 away from capacity. And we want to build 3,171 new housing units. How does that calculate? And if we were close to build out in 1999 and we're still building and building and building and you guys, you know, think it's okay to build another 3,000 housing units. I mean, I don't understand how any of that makes sense. And in the year 2000, we had over 1,000 built lots that were built. And we were close to build out according to the master plan. Read the master plan. That's what it says. I understand. Okay. But we had 1,000 buildable lots, uh, buildable acres that we could use. So what happens sometimes is zoning changes things, but it was 1,000. Zoning acres. changes because the township changes it. Well, no, I didn't say that. My time's up. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Good. So uh, <clears throat> Troxel tries to argue all well, zoning changes and <laughs> Denise fires back with, yeah. The township changes zoning. Yeah. So You're don't give it to me. That they, oh, yeah. Just it's like they woke up in the morning and read the paper. Like, oh, crap. Guess what? That's now high density housing zone zone for. No longer R1. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Don't argue with Denise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know a 16th of what she knows, don't try to argue anything. Because you're, you're not, you're not, you're not going to win. You're gonna look, you're gonna look bad, and especially yeah. if you're Troxel and you're up for re-election. Yeah. So. So, you know, and one of the things too that, that comes to mind going through this whole thing is when you look at school ratings. Uh, one of the things involved in school ratings is student to teacher rate teacher ratios. So, are we trying to get to capacity? Because that seems that seems less beneficial for students. In my opinion, just something that I thought of. Um, I mean, are we, are we trying to be right on the edge to where everything is full? Because I feel like maybe if you have kids in the system, you're probably better off right now than you would be if 400 more students were in the system. I I don't know. I mean, it's just I'm just something that I was thinking about because that that is one of the things. You know, when I was looking into New Jersey schools. And why everybody says they're better than other areas, and some say you know we, we have a, we have a good ratio of student to, to teacher ratio. Um, 
But why push it? Why push it? So you don't have a choice a lot of times in the you know what what you you don't. I mean, as the school, they have no they have no say in we're not building any additional housing. Council does not need to look at the school's scenario to say, okay, you want to approve, you know, you want to ask to approve this, um, you know, highway commercial property to become, you know, condo units. Okay. You know, they don't have to factor the school in. So the two, even though they're both funded by the taxpayer here, don't need to communicate, talk, or anything else on any level as far as a requirement. You know what I mean? You, if you're being a good steward of your entire, you know, township, you'd think, you know, that you would want to to do that. I mean, I'm saying all of this as my own personal opinion, not that of any position I hold or anything. But you know, it's definitely something that you would think you'd want to work together on doing. But you, oh, look at that. We have the. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty sweet down there. So the um, yeah the the. Where was I going with that whole thing there? But yeah, it, it's to, to your point of you know wanting to get to a certain level of running at a you know at at capacity, you don't have the choice a lot of times. Like if you have an influx of you know say right now you know if we have an influx of students that are from other countries that are coming here, we have the obligation to teach these kids. You know the parents have the right to send them to the schools. We have the obligation to you know to teach them. Whether there's housing units that were built that the school wanted or didn't want, that's none of our you know obligation. If they have a, a, a resident in town, we have to serve those yeah. you know those people. So it's not really the choice. I don't think it's any choice of the school. You know wh- when you're asking that question the way you were asking it, I don't think that they they're like saying like, "All right, let's ride it right to the edge. Let's keep it." You know what I mean? Like there's no way to throttle what what that is. Yeah. It's, but the, the the argument always the, the the argument from the citizen side is, look, we're we're pushing up on our capacity, and then the pushback from council always is we're not at capacity yet. So, my thought is from from, from the council's perspective, why get there? Like why get there? And, and oh, I and, see what you're but, saying. But council okay. council understand. can't say. Council can't say, hey, that property that you have that you want to build on. They can't we, we just want that to that be a park. As, like, we, we right. just want to be a park. You can't build there. But what council can do is if you have if you've got 300 acres of land and it's R1, let's just say there's no extra space involved. It's 300 houses. Mm. 300 one acre lots. So max 300 houses. The argument here is what we're doing is we're taking 300 acres and we're saying we're going to put 800 units on there. Mm -hmm. So some single family houses, but also some townhouses, maybe some apartments. You know, so instead of 300, we're going to do 800. Right. Uh, Well, if you listen. That's where we can fight it, though. Yeah, and if you listen to what. Mrs. Albright Troxel said in that clip, at that time we had a thousand, you know, yeah. acres you know, of that, or a thousand buildable units. Okay, you had a thousand buildable units back then, uh, and twenty five years ago, we currently now have another thirty one hundred units already built. That's not including all the stuff that was built, which I can't even imagine what that number has been since twenty five years ago in this town. To Denise's point, is, okay. <laughs> so your argument is that we had a thousand units back then. Okay, we're still like we have. Uh, it's insane. So those you know that yeah. Uh, I understand that there's you know a huge need for housing and uh, it's I don't know. Does it have to be here? You so if you purchased a piece of property as an investor, right, and you purchased it as you purchased it commercial month, property, yeah, right, or you purchased it, or you know what you purchased. It wasn't yeah. like, all right, listen, we're gonna go sign the papers, and then when you're done, you like opened up like an envelope, and you're like, what? This is this is commercial. I yeah. I want to build houses on it. No, that's not. You knew no. what you were getting into when you purchased it. So if the ta- why does the town need to? 
bend to whatever it is that you want to do for it. So you're telling me that you trump the master plan, the master plan here of the township that everyone agreed on are the, 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 um, what are they called? The professionals that we, uh, you know, hire to write the master plan and to say what we all do. Everyone agreed and said, this is what it is. It is what it is. That's why it's called a plan. That's why it's documented. That's why. So you just, I'm not pointing, you know, I'm just pointing. Yeah, I got it. You trumped everything that we all did because you want to do this here. Okay, cool. You got it. Well, and then the next person, and the next person, and the next person. You missed the step. The step. The, well, there's the step where that that person owns the land, donates to their reelection campaign. Which I, yeah, you said it. Which is, in these cases, a hundred percent true. Right. We've, we've looked at the political donations <laughs> right. that come in these from these places, and it is the, yep. the, the the people that own these lands are donors. So yeah, but that's but that, but that's all I'm saying. Is you can't tell somebody that owns the land, sorry, we may we may, we changed our mind, you can't build there. But you can say, look, you bought it as R one, it's R one, right? And you know why? And, and, and you know why they probably can't sell houses on R one because right. it, houses houses on one acre lots are expensive, yeah. And you can't sell expensive houses in an area that's surrounded by apartments. People don't want to buy high end houses on one acre lots. Or when their taxes are that high because they're they have a whole Because the tax the percentage right. is higher. So We're yeah. creating a city is what we're doing. We we are. That's I was thinking I was thinking that this week. Like Gloucester Township is creating a city. Yeah. It sucks because look, the cities over the last several years, our cities are like everybody's moving out of our cities. And they're moving into, you know, the areas like Gloucester Township. Yeah, and look, the problems don't go away when 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 all the crime and everything leaves the cities. It moves somewhere else. So yeah, we talked about this in the podcast before about the crime, you know, in, in this area about like you know uh, the access from forty two and you know and yeah. things like that. But it's getting closer and closer and closer. Now the police department. Yeah. Several times a week. Lock your doors. We didn't have to lock our doors when I was when I was younger. Yeah. It was a smart thing to do, but right. You didn't have to do it to, you know, to still have your you know, ch- change in your cup, you know, your cup holder when you get in in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Car ransacked. Apparently, they don't take the change out of the cup holder. Uh, yeah. So. Anyway, let's move on to um, Beetlejuice. <laughs> so, uh, a gentleman came and he had a question, and this is another one of those like a, a new person coming to ask a question. And this poor guy is all, all I'm thinking as uh, you know he's getting his answer to a question when he's asking. But you know what? He stood up and he actually responded back, and I was kind of like, oh look, see this guy's he's on the ball. He knows how this guy probably answers, or how politicians answer, or lawyers. Uh, what clip are we on? Eleven. Joe? 11? All right, let me play 11 here. You used to come out and clean our sewers and everything. Is that still going to be done by the township in public works, or does that go to the buyer of the MUA? Good. Uh, yes, good. It can be. Yes, it can be done by public works. That's something we have. It, well, is it going to be, or is it I not? Believe, I believe it will be. It will be. If that's the case, and it does, it does, again, it has to go to the voters. Uh, by referendum. All right, so yeah, so the guy doesn't leave me very confident. No, the guy caught that he goes. So will it be done? He goes, it can be. And he's like, no, no, will it be? And so Tom's follow-up response is another one, like of his famous lines: "I believe it will be." So you believe it will? Be? You also believe in the Easter Bunny, the you know, Chris, uh, what's his Santa Claus, and also. He also believed that there would be nothing, you know, with the MUA. I think he's used those words many a times of "I believed." So, also the guy, the, the guy that does the weed whacking for Public Works, is he cleaning out sewers now? Because the the guys for the that were working on the MUA, look, they specialized in, in all these systems that were around our township. And they've told us that they separated them out, right? That there was the the right, leaf so, and lawn, uh, or what are they the recycling side of MUA? Yeah, was 
folded into public works, but MUA uh, sewer side is still not part, you know, of the township still. So they are separated out, and if they're bullet, then what happens? Well, that's the whole point of not the whole point, but you know, it's a, a yeah. huge part of the whole point of like, yeah, this those whole thing. Guys are Where's going with all those like, jobs? The sewer guys, the, the sewer guys, unless the sewer guy says, you know what, I'll weed whack. Yeah. The sewer guys are going to go away. And you're not going to get it from the uh, from the private company that buys it. They're not just right. going to come out and do work for free. That's that's bad business for them. Yeah. So that's not going to happen. <sighs> yeah, it's just a tough one. But he's uh, it's just another example of them answering in a way that will just they hope satisfy you. But that guy was quick enough to catch like okay, they can do it. Doesn't mean that they will do it. But he didn't follow yeah. up on the will meaning. I believe it would be. I think he once you vote seen for it, right? <laughs> it's over. Yep. All right. So we had another clip of. Um, oh, Marion Hayes. This uh, this is Green Acre stuff, right? This is Green Acre stuff. So this is um, Brian Burns, who's always um, on top of trying to keep council into preserving land and keeping it to you know, Green Acres, using methods that cost us you know nothing. I mean, even though. It's nothing. Yeah. Comes know, out through of state our, money. It's state money. State money is still our money. Blah, blah, blah. But uh, he had a follow up, or he, you know, was just following up with um, something here. It's letting us know it's at a county level of preserving the, was it Murray and Hayes uh, properties, right? Yeah. Uh, I followed up with the Green Acres situation with the Murray and Hayes's, one or more with the homeowners. Uh, we've been informed that the documents are now at the county level, which is a great thing to hear. Um, especially in, in lieu of Ms. Coyne's description of 3,000 new homes being built, the golf course is going to get developed. So at least a piece of the most valuable natural resource in, in the township is being preserved. And I believe this is the same as the Rosalind Bridge because of its proximity to GEMS, 75% Green Acres, 25% Office of Natural Resource Restoration. So nothing comes out of the taxpayer's money in order to preserve this piece of ground. All right, so again, I, I, nothing coming out of our tax, our pockets. I don't specifically agree with that statement because the government does not have money; they run off of our money. Yeah. So, either way, but they're not still, raising GT's taxes correct. to buy these properties, right? So, I mean, you know, way back, you know, like way back when when Brian started coming out, I was like, this guy, this guy just wants to spend more of my money. Oh, really? and, and, yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, well, I, 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 you know, in the back of my mind, I, I wanted. I didn't want anything else to be built other than businesses. I wanted some businesses to come in, try to help out the tax burden. Uh, but I listened to Brian talk, and I was like, I don't know that he gets it, man. He, he's got, you know, they're look, they're they're spending money on this stuff. We we can't we can't just go buy up land. Right. Um, but when you come, yeah. But when you know, after I kind of educated myself on it a little bit and found that that it, I mean, it's state money. It's still our money, but it's not like our Gloucester Township taxes aren't going up to buy these land, to buy right. land. So, but what uh, he's preserving is stuff to like where we're saying, oh, the golf course. Why don't you just preserve that? The township doesn't own it. That's the problem. Like, is another individual person yeah. does, and you cannot stop them from developing their own land. I'm sorry you don't like it, but that's their property. You. Yeah, we get. You know, we we have you... we have like a, like a fund. We have a, we have a fund that has money in it from Green Acres. Um, you know, I think at one point it was like one point some million dollars in there. I'm not um, sure. I don't... To use for some of these properties, and, and I think Brian kind of coordinated that. Um, yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, but when you look at the golf course, golf course is worth millions of dollars. Right. They had a chance. They had a point in time that they, I guess, everybody had a chance to buy it. Somebody yeah. did buy it, and. You're going to have to deal with what they want to do with it. We as a town don't have to agree to put, uh, you know, to to allow variances that are ridiculous yeah. to put a warehouse or to to rezone it for you know for something else. But it's not ours to do with what we want. You know, we you just don't have that right. But um, so anyway, this next segment. This I specifically have a call out for one person. <laughs> is this guy real? I don't know if he's real or not, but so the the after this meeting, the GT Observer um, put out 
just the questions around like what is all this? There was two different people at the same meeting because this MUA topic has come up. I guess people are starting to look into it, look up the history and finding some different things that were concerning. That says, hey, there's state like lawsuits here around uh, uranium being in our water, and this water needs to be put through the Gloucester Township's sewer system. Wait, and then it goes to Camden County, and then, all right, so Camden County was paid $1.7 million because of this? Wait, Gloucester Township took $400,000? Then you see all these names that are names? So the questions were asked, right? So we, the GT Observer uh, site put out a question saying, what, what is this? What is it? Do you guys know anything about this? Put the links to the documents. Are you guys going to read them yourselves? Didn't say it. Hey, hey. There's your questions. Yeah, questions. questions. That's how you learn things, right? So there was somebody that online, Joe, what's his name? Uh, Joe Pepsi. Pepsi. Yeah. He Joe Pepsi calls it out on every site it would be. What's oh, a nothing burger? This is blah, blah. It's like, okay, dude, you really got to. Yeah, it's a, just fear mongering. Yeah, just no. fear it's Questions. Uh, okay, if you're right, if it was just fear mongering and this is all made up stuff. Wouldn't there be a different response from council if they were asked specific questions around this? You would yeah. imagine, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's play a clip then of, of what actually was said, just so we can see the people that are you know in the know and that you're defending to you know to the death here in the um, in the clip. What what they say? Um, I have a question about the acquisition of possible selling of the MUA as it relates to Jim's landfill. I understand that there's a Jim's um, trustee, I believe it's Kevin Buccheroni, and that there was um, an order where the runoff, the, the storm drain or runoff water from the Jim's landfill supposedly is contain, uh, contaminated with uranium, and the water has to be pumped through the Gloucester Township MUA to Camden County for treatment. And I believe the township received four hundred thousand dollars in order to facilitate this decree. I guess it came from the state or wherever. But now there's a Jim's trustee that's supposed to manage overseeing this cleanup of this contaminated water. How does that play into selling our sewer system? Will there still be a Jim's trustee? What happens with this water? This contaminated water if we sell our sewer this coin there's no longer a gems trustee and they no longer meet uh that has been folded for at least pre-pandemic yes who in the state miss danny could you please not shout out uh state d okay what exactly did they take over are they the operation? Uh, the operation running a <laughs> landfill. So, are we still taking the water, the contaminated uranium water, and pumping it through the Gloucester Township MUA to the Canaan County MUA? Is that still happening? Yes. I do not believe so, but. This is so, yeah. No, I, I think that ceased many years ago. Uh, when they made the determination that it was clear. And that's uh, when the state started taking over uh, the uh, operations up in the land. That's my recommendation. Okay, I couldn't really hear you. You said when it was clear? You mean there's no more uranium water? Well, no. my understanding, perhaps I'll give you my recollection, uh, everything was held in the state's hands. Uh, the trust expired many years ago. And the state took over uh, and all the action that takes place or anything that's permitted to go up on that land for, uh, including the solar panels. The state made decisions on all of those, whether anything could go there or not go there. The state went, and you can see if he's been in control of uh, what happened on the land for the uh, one state tax force to be doing all that. Chief, can you chime in? I don't know what it exactly it does, but several years ago there was a treatment plant that was built on site at the Gems Landfill. There is a, it's, I can't say for sure how many years, but there is a treatment, as I was, it was explained to me, 
a treatment site that was, and it's manned by these DEP employees or contractors and such that come and go. I just know that because we have a range facility nearby. And, um, and just, I can't say what it's filtering or what it's treating, but there is a facility that matches the timetable when this, the trustee list changes, as it was explained. So if I understand what you're saying correctly, you're saying that you don't know if the water, the contaminated uranium water, is still being pumped through Gloucester Township, MUA to Cannon County. Is that what you're telling me? We'll get information on you for that, but there is no trust anymore as you started with your, your comments. Mr. Bricioni is not in that role anymore. But we'll find additional information for you. We'll get back to you. When? Next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So if there was no uranium like Joe Pepsi and other people, you know, are claiming. Don't you think some of those answers would be different when they specifically stated uranium water, blah, 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 like this? No, and they would answer, it's no longer being done. Okay, so then you're saying if no longer means that it was being, was happening, right? Yeah. But somehow Joe Pepsi Shouldn't knows it? more and he yeah. likes to. Shouldn't it always be tested? So the, the, in the articles that were posted on our website from some of the legal cases, uh, it seemed like there was some testing done up until 2003, I thought was the latest that I saw. I thought 2005, but either way, okay. it's, it's somewhere in the early 2000s. Yeah, so roughly 20 years ago, uh, and, and levels were acceptable. But... The dump's still there. So wouldn't there always be someone that monitors what's going into the water? Well, I believe that that's Denise's whole point with this whole thing is the like if and the 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 question comes up and she posed it and if you go back and and play it, there was a trust that was put in place, right? That uh, or is that what they called it? A trust. I, I, I didn't pay attention yet. I didn't pay Whatever yeah. it was. There, it, there was somebody who was put in charge of it that was um, supposed to manage the, you know, the entire thing around keeping it safe and treating the water properly and blah, blah, blah. So if, if this sewer system for Gloucester Township was sold to a private company, who, it is, who is it that's going to be looking after that? I believe, I'm, I can't speak for Denise, but I believe that that's the the root of what she's asking like how does that who are yeah. they taking that over because she asked that and, the, and they answered back well the state has taken you know that over so i would assume that the state maybe is in charge of that but they said that the the trust i'm using the word trust i'm not even sure if that's the right word now i don't think i had a note in there but the um either way the the trust has yeah. been taken or d dissolved or expired i think the term was you know that was used that the state has now taken over. They don't know specifically who, but like the DEP or you know or something like that is is uh, in charge of this. Um, but yeah, that was the root of I th I believe anyway of what her question you know was is who's managing it, who's doing all that uh, because the landfill still is there. There's still water that's got to be leaching in there, and they also called this something else too. What they call like a super site or a super fund. A super fund, yeah. yeah. I just, I don't, I didn't really didn't look into what that meant, but um, top five in the country, yeah. So top, and that was we had that clip earlier in the night. Someone else had looked into it, I'm sure, um, because of this whole MUA thing. But they looked in; it was top one, of the top five most polluted things in the entire country, right? It makes you wonder way back, like how did how did this wind up here to begin with? I don't know. My first thought was, it has been so easy to get things past the folks in Gloucester Township that <laughs> <laughs> anything can happen. Anything at all yeah. can happen here. And uh, like you get 50 people that are pissed. Out of 60,000 people, there's 50 people that are pissed, right? right. And those 50 people, they're not making any difference. So, <laughs> you know what? The people that have, the people that have been failing us for years... Well, their parents probably also failed us, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Right? Somebody just came in and they said, uh, hey, what are they doing up on that hill over there? 
None. Now look, look over here. There's a squirrel. And they're just yeah. doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, it's uh, just, they're getting rid of some. They're getting rid of some stuff over there. And then maybe at some point somebody said, uh, "Look, it's just you know we're disposing of some toxic stuff." And then 50 people got pissed, right? But then the rest of the people. They just stayed home. Yeah, you know, and oh, then, that's all the way over then, there. I live yeah. here. Oh, and so the next thing you know, night. we've we've got we've got one of the, the top five most toxic dumps in the country here because nobody gave a damn about it. Yeah, it's not so my it's backyard. like generations of people that don't give a damn about it, and this is what we're in. We've got we've got a city coming in here, and then a trash mountain. Trash mountain. Trash mountain next to a city. And this is where we live, folks. And we could we could fix it, man, if we just got off our asses and did something about it. Yeah, that is true. We probably can't fish tracks, Trash Mountain, but we can at least make yeah. sure that uh, that we're not drinking the water from it. That's what they say. Like, what's in the water over there? Well, maybe it was uranium in this case. Maybe that's yeah. what causes it. But... Anyway, I think that is um, pretty much it for the council meeting there. Um, I think you and I are doing our parts of at least trying to educate people of what's you know going on here. I try to get off my butt yeah. and get out and vote. When, um, I didn't go to the last council meeting. I don't, I, I, I'm super busy. Uh, so busy with this busy life. All these people. I, I'm so busy. I can't do that stuff. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I've taken all this time out of my life over the last several years <laughs> to uh, to schedule in, being a good mem- member of the community, and uh, yeah, if you're not going to do it, I'm not going to do it either. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I stayed home and 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 I, I did some I did some work on the house and uh, I didn't feel bad about it. I didn't feel bad about it at all. I would have mm. felt bad if they said, "Damn, this building is packed," and I'd have been like. I should, yeah, be I, missed out. I should be over there, man. The people, the people finally woke up. Yeah. Hey, if you're uh, gonna wake up, yeah. Before you wake to up, our channel. Yep. Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll keep you informed the best we can. And if you got, uh, if if you got some topics and you got some information on some stuff that uh, maybe we haven't talked about or maybe we got wrong, uh, reach, reach out. out to us. Comment. Yeah, reach out wherever you can. Comment on some stuff. Hit us on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, anywhere uh, you possibly can. We're not hard to get a hold of, so uh, reach out. And uh, man, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, until then, yep. we'll see you on the next podcast. All right, we'll see, see you guys folks. soon.